meaning troublemaking portion. If you handle the I thought, you have handled the whole mind. If you take out the poisonous fangs, then the snake, which may be six feet long, can do no harm to you. Someone was carrying a huge bundle of cotton, but saying, oh, it's so heavy, so heavy, and you are surprised. He is carrying cotton. Why is he crying that it is heavy? And you go close and let me see and you try to touch it. Then you realize that the center of the whole cotton bundle is a solid iron ball. And imagine, you take that iron ball out and again put that huge cotton ball upon his hand. And he walks easily. Our mind is like that big cotton ball. And the ego, a number of self-descriptive, self-labeling thoughts is, are like the iron ball. So if the iron ball is taken out, but you and I ask, these examples are always nice to hear, but how do we remove this ego? I cannot take away my ego because I myself am the ego, There's such strong identification. If the ego were something outside on table, or these days we could have outsourced the job, call up some suitable company, you know. Can you come and remove the ego here in me? Some surgery. We don't know where the ego is located, how to pluck it out. Therefore, which are a marga. Therefore, this path of inquiry. So we see in the 19th, we read already, we have to calm our mind to an extent. Then inquire. Therefore, this is called vichara marga. Whereas traditional Vedanta is marked by contemplation. It is dhyana, chintana, or what you call shravana, manana, nididhyasana. There are some words. You read uh, Upanishads, you read Shankara's commentary, or to make your job easy. There are a number of prakarana granthas, Viveka Chodamani, Atma Bodha, Tattva Bodha. You see, there is a shloka, for example, in Atma Bodha, which has a bearing on these teachings. There is a beautiful shloka. The whole Atma Bodha, some 64 shlokas, is so beautiful, full of nice illustrations. Here it is said, this shloka, Tavat Satyam Jagad Bhati Shuktika Rajatam Yatha Yavan Nadnayate Brahma Sarva Adhishtana Madhvayam A short shloka. Tavat Satyam Jagad Bhati This world, this whole universe, and mind you, especially more than the physical thing, this, this world we perceive in the form of good and bad, attracting and repulsive. You and I perceive the world. How do we perceive the world as regards our joy and sorrow? Something frightens us. Some other thing gives us new hope. Somebody makes us feel good. Somebody else, by just a look, you know, makes our heart sink. So this is our world. The world, you know, is constantly tossing us up and down. The Atma Bodha Shloka says, it's a revelation, not inquiry. Classical Vedanta gives you certain truths and says, think about it, contemplate on it. So this Shloka says, this world will look real to you as long as you don't know Brahma, which is the underlying truth. Yavan na jnayate Brahma, tavat jagat satyam bhati. And an analogy is given in that Atma Bodha Shloka. Shuktika Rajatam Yatha. Shuktika is a certain seashell, seashell, which shines like silver. Especially from a distance, if you look at it, you will think that there is a piece of silver. And you will feel attracted. Now, unless you go close and take a look at it and realize, oh my, this is seashell. I have always known this, I have heard about it, but today from a distance I didn't think that this was a seashell. So once you know the seashell, you won't even touch it, you just walk away, right? So when you know the seashell, 
the attraction you had for what you misconstrued or mis mistook as silver disappears. Likewise, Vedanta, Upanishadic wisdom says, when guided by the Upanishadic mantras, you realize Brahman, then the same world which used to uplift you at times, throw you at, at some other time, ele elevate you or elate you or, and depress you, etc., etc., it will all lose its power. Classical Vedanta is characterized by certain revelations and you are called upon to contemplate on them. In Ramana Maharshi's self-inquiry, Vedantic revelations can be handy, but primarily it is, it is confronting our own thought, confronting and engaging with thought as they arise. So reflecting that spirit, the 19th shloka says, Ahamayam kuto bhavati. How come I am feeling low today? Don't take that feeling low as real. Question it. When the mind says, I don't know, I am sad today. Ask yourself, who is sad? The simple answer that comes to you is, I am sad. No. Question, what is this I? Is it real I or is it a mischief of mind? Is it a misconception? Now to give a Vedantic illustration, Vedanta and self-inquiry, they complement and they go hand in hand. There is a common example given by teachers. You stand before a certain mirror and you get a shock. You look so obese. What happened to me? Then you again examine, oh, this is a con concave, this is a concave mirror. Who kept this concave mirror here at this, some public place? You know? Other day at uh, you know, uh, in Mineral Wells house, I got a slight shock. You know, first night I think. I went and you know, I was about to sleep, suddenly I saw there is another guy sleeping there. <laughs> I am an Advait in non-duality, <laughs> but I saw duality. Who is this? Then I realized, in what do you call it? Uh, ceiling to the floor, there is a mirror there, white. <laughs> Me only. So I was afraid of myself for you. <laughs> Relieved. Okay, we are in business again. <laughs> so, you know, you have, you get a jerk. Why did that come? The earlier example was... Uh, sorry? Okay. Oh, thank you. <coughs> Nowadays it doesn't happen much to me. Olderness I used to get very distracted by my own examples. <laughs> I would not know what I was talking before. <laughs> In love with our own fancies. They have the concave mirror. So moment you realize this is a concave mirror, I am not what it shows me to be. That is the nature of self-inquiry. <coughs> when certain thoughts, certain memories, J. Krishnamurti used to repeatedly say, thought is response of memory. One of his very, very thought-provoking statements is, thought is a response of memory. He would challenge his audience, can you think without reference to the past? Without, you know, the shadow of the past falling upon your present thinking. Moment I see somebody, my past, you know, memories. Oh, he looks like my boss when I worked at some company long ago. Who asked you to remember the company and where you worked, etc.? But mind goes. I look at somebody, she looks exactly like a cousin of mine. So memory, in hundred ways, and if it is just, you know, he looks like my former boss and she looks like my cousin, that's okay, harmless. But suppose that boss was a terrible person, now I get afraid of this gentleman here. And that cousin was a very loving and caring companion to me in my childhood, I get very you know, favorable thoughts about a lady here. So Krishnamurti's um, remark that thought is a response of memory, is a daunting statement. You and I shudder at that 
insight. Oh, really? Can we never think without our past coming and hijacking thinking process? He used to challenge, can you go for a walk? Look at the flowers, look at the plants, look at the clouds and look, look at them, just perceive them. Do not conceive something related to them. There was this John Klein in Santa Barbara, one of his famous statements was that, perceive, do not conceive. By context, what is meant by conceive is bringing associated thoughts, pulling them from the past. Right? You see a flower and you think, you know, when we were living in California, we had similar flowers. Did somebody ask you? But memory goes down, right? Going down the memory lane. Krishnamurti used to question, can you see a flower? In fact, a very poetic and very profound way. He used to say, one of his famous statements, can you see a flower without naming it? You may be a professor of botany, but don't bring that during your morning walk. See a flower, see the color, and if you are close enough, feel the fragrance. All that is present. But if you name it, this is hibiscus rosa sinensis or something, who asked me? And if you appreciate the, the insight of this statement, can you see a flower without naming it? One last reference to J. Krishnamurti, he would also poke you. Can you see your spouse's face tomorrow morning without remembering either the fight you had with him or her or the good, have, the good times you had with him or her without the past coming in. In fact, the way he expressed was very interesting. Can you see the face of your spouse tomorrow morning as though you are seeing him or her for the first time? Very challenging, spiritually challenging question. Generally, we cannot. Moment, you know, if we have met before, we are in a hurry to remember, we have met before, where was that? We get into memory so soon. Memory which is a great aid, great tool, a great <coughs> assistant to us in a hundred matters, also has this dimension to it. It binds us. So, vritta yaha, or rather, aham ayam, aham here means ahankara, please note, the word aham, stands for ahankara or aham vritti, the I thought, I hyphen thought. Aham ayam, this I, either expressed as no good or expressed as very good, whatever. Kutaha bhavati, how does it arise? How is it formed? That means you are asking a very fundamental question. <coughs> Normally when we feel good, we want more of such experiences which will make us feel good. Like I, in my example, if I remember that incident in 2018 where I was honored somewhere, normally my mind would go into, how do I ensure that such, such uh, people come to me more and more? How do I ensure I get into such situations more and more? This is the outward movement. And if I remember the sad incident of 2016, normally the mind says, how do I avoid a recurrence of such situations? This is an outward movement. Instead, you remember either the unpleasant or the pleasant episodes and you relive that experience. You feel, you know, elevated or you feel sinking either way. <coughs> Question, what is this? How did this arise? And then Maharshi Ramana says, Chinvataha, for somebody inquiring like this. Chinvataha means Marganam Kurvataha, someone who is doing this investigation. There is the statement of hope, of assurance. Patati Aham, Aham once more means Ahankara. If you inquire, if you question, then it cannot stay long. I do admit this detecting the formation of the I, that I thought, that ahankara, that ego, 
noticing it and questioning it is a very special art. If you labor on this, if you contemplate, if you discuss with friends, if you listen to these lectures with more and more attention, you will get that art. For that you don't have to go register in a course at Harvard or you know, Oxford. It's all in you. You are of the nature of intelligence. You are not the body or the mind. You are a certain intelligence. Bhagavad Gita says, the truth of your existence is the light of all lights. Jyoti Shamapita Jyotihi Tamasapparam Uchyate Every one of us is of the nature of Chit, Chaitanya. And this inquiry requires that we operate from that core of our being. We are intelligence. Let's not get carried away by thoughts, by memories, by the ahankara that gets formed somehow. It's a phantom figure, it's not real. Question it and ask, where from is this arising? And some teacher